Maybe. I'm getting ready. You're getting ready. Because <laughs> that's what we do. Yeah. We do that whole thing. That whole thing. That song and dance. Song and dance. If we wanted to talk about Adepticon, I'm like, I don't think I need to recap the events anymore because this will be coming out after yeah. all that. <laughs> yeah, that's... I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. But no, I... And that's fine. I think we've been we've been talking about the Adepticon events for like the last four months straight or yes. something like that. So it's kind of funny how that works. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll do this one and then we'll have a recap right afterwards. Yeah, pretty much. Figure that out. Yeah. Yay! So they get two episodes the next month. Yeah. Sort of. Plus whatever else gets recorded. <laughs> yeah. So this is the thing. It's funny because I'll I'll start doing like this is the half episode. <laughs> and then it's like as more episodes start showing up I just keep getting like closer and closer. <laughs> it's like all right this is this is the 0.75 episode. Yeah. I don't know. We might have to change that a little bit. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. As it goes down the road. Um so yeah, this is Dead's on the podcast. This is Dead's on the podcast. I'm Brian. I'm Rick. Welcome to the Dead Zone Podcast. Dead Zone is the sci-fi table top. Nobody else here. No one else here this time. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. Have you, have you been having fun without me? <laughs> so, it's really weird sitting in that seat. Yeah. It's really weird. Because, like, you've always done the introductions, mm-hmm. and you do kind of that. Like, okay, we're not very organized, but we're organized enough because of what you write down, and you kind of keep us, keep me in line. <laughs> at least, at least we we make sure we hit on the topics that we yeah. intend to talk about. <laughs> yeah. So sitting in that seat, and I'm like, what do I do next? What do I do next? <laughs> you hit the uh, record button. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, the great thing is Rick has joined us. Yeah. Uh, from Thunderbird Studios when we're doing those podcasts, so he mm. kind of he kind of has been helping me. <laughs> yeah. Take that lead. Oh, look at that! You forgot a button. <laughs> I didn't, yeah. I didn't forget them. No, but there might no, have just no. been extra echoiness. Yes. And now there should be less. Let me, maybe. We're professional like. Yes. Like a professional. Well, we're amateurs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true true that. But but for those that haven't listened to them, uh, we have a couple episodes up talking about Warzone Eternal. Yes, by uh, Rest Nova Games. Yep. Which uh was are some really really fun uh, episodes to to yeah. go and listen to. Uh, I did so as part of putting the episodes <laughs> out. So, um, but no, it, it's a, it's up, up, uh, upcoming Kickstarter project. Yep. Uh, for kind of a revitalization of the, the uh, Mutant Chronicles. Warzone, Chron- yeah. Warzone Mutant, and Mutant Chronicles. So it's, the universe is Mutant Chronicles. Right. Um, and the game is called Warzone Eternal. Mm-hmm. Um, Warzone, uh, the game that it's based on, that it's kind of revitalizing, came out in the early 90s, that time frame. Yeah. It, it kept that war zone. And there were some other offshoot games and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, I got a chance to play it. Um, so on our last episode, we talked about playing it. And it was like, wow. <laughs> I really like this game. Yeah. But it's it's that I like it because the rules system is that same dead zone mm-hmm. simplistic. Yeah. Once, you, once you're in playing, there's a lot more strategy to it. Um, but it's it's simple to learn. That's good to hear. Um, and I'm not one of those dice goblins. I don't like a ton of <laughs> dice. So the fact that it's played with a D20. Yeah. 
and you're going for ones. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I could do this. I, I won't lie, that that always threw me. Like, I've only played a handful of games that ha- that have that style mechanic, yeah. like the um, the Alien versus Predator from Protos, yes, from Protos, Protos. games, uh, way back when. I I still have <laughs> so much stuff from that, and I <laughs> we've played it once. Yep. Uh, since it went out of print. Yep. And um, but but yeah, that it, it took some getting used to of like. Oh, I'm I'm trying to roll low. Yeah. Um, rather than high. It's that um that critical failure is a twenty. It's like yes. Yeah, I got a twenty. Oh, oh wait. no. Wrong game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dungeons and Dragons, you set everybody up to, <laughs> for failure. Yes. There. Uh, but yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with it. Uh, That's obviously awesome. getting to know that chair. And <laughs> yeah. Kind of organizing it a little bit. It's taken me some time. Um, but it, it'll be fun to see how that grows and yeah. how that grows as a part of Deads on the Podcast as well. Yeah, absolutely. And for those wondering, like, why Brian isn't on, on those episodes, <laughs> it, it's it's purely a scheduling uh, yeah. and, you know, opportunity kind of thing where uh, Rick's a bit more centralized for, for some of the people that are involved with yep. that. And I am, like, an hour and 15 <laughs> and, minutes away. Yeah. So, um, I'm, you know, it, it's... I would love to to a play the game because it does yes. sound like it's a lot of fun, and b you know be part of uh, some of those podcasts in the future because they sound happen. like really great guys. Yeah, uh, Alex has been a lot of fun, and I mean you talk about somebody that knows the lore. Yeah, like random things <laughs> out of the blue. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have to go check that out because I was like, sweet. One one thing that they you guys touched on in the last episode that I thought was really. Uh, a neat component was the named character stuff. Yeah. Uh, that's something uh, I think we'd we'd all really love to see more of in, like, Dead Zone. Yeah. And in Firefight, uh, in particular, could definitely use its named characters. The, the named characters, yeah. Um, uh, and Which hopefully it, we'll see them in the future. I mean, the lore is set up for it already when you yeah. look at the mercenaries. Instead yeah. of them being mercenaries, having them as named characters. Yeah, there are there are a, a whole mess of uh, mercenaries that are are named and have uh, kind of history established, especially if yep. you've played through Star Saga. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> especially if they they keep all that like canon yeah. forward. You know, it's like okay, you know, this is this is uh, Erica Delinsky after <laughs> the Arius contract, after the the Devil's Betrayal. Yep. You know. Um, there's there's a whole mess of, of great story at the heart of yeah. those those campaigns for Star Saga, uh, so definitely hope they 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 kind of keep that going forward because yeah. uh, I think there's there's a great wealth of, of uh, content there, and then two like 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 we we're saying uh, I I would love to see more fleshed out stories for those named characters yes because uh, right now as far as Dead Zone goes. Uh, we have um, the the enforcer. Oh, um, from Ford Observer. Ford Observer from the um, Roca. Is that? Yeah, that's Roca. Yeah, Roca was Roca in. Roca has a story because he was in First Strike. Yep. Uh, but I don't think the the GCPS Marines that are in that story no. have named uh, no. units yet. No, I don't think so. But they could. They but really but could. but that's that's the thing and, and you know hopefully we're we're gonna keep seeing more stories come out uh, for for the fluff <laughs> yeah yeah like, it, but that's also I mean you go to the um, the Bard Facebook group mm-hmm. all the stories you guys have been writing yeah like if any of that goes into canon and gets some characters like like that's a perfect setup mm-hmm. uh, for I mean okay maybe we're a little like biased on this, Maybe. but some of your <laughs> characters would be amazing as a named character in Dead Zone in I'd, Firefight. I'd have a lot of fun doing that, and most of my named characters can be made out of yeah, exactly. <laughs> the models that exist. <laughs> so, yes. so like, I mean, I mean, my one of my main protagonists that I, I work a lot with was uh, Christina Lawson, yep. my Rebel Commander, is based off Speaking the Rebel Commander. Uh, you know. Uh, leader that the human, I think I think she's now the cell leader, human cell leader yeah. uh, model. That's, but uh, you know that that you know uh, rebel with the, the posing with the sniper rifle and everything, and <laughs> and it's either a data pad or binoculars, you know, depending on how you pose the arm. 
Um, but uh, but yeah, so like I built a lot of these these characters crafted around that. Um, I think my my Captain Hopper can be yeah. made out of uh, the the Marauder. Yes, uh, Commando one hundred percent can. <laughs> uh, I might have started working on that. Oh, sweet! <laughs> <laughs> I, I might have used that as inspiration. I still gotta figure out like a color scheme for him. Yeah, but yeah. Well, if you need ideas. I have an idea of what he looks like. Okay, yes, yeah. I need that. Send that okay. to me. <laughs> well, see what you need to you do is you got to read this story. <laughs> I've been reading this story. Um, yeah, because we don't have anything yes. going on. So, uh, did want to mention, uh, this episode is going to be coming out after, after Adepticon, Adepticon, but yep. it's being recorded the week before Adepticon. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we aren't going to be covering much about the event, no. as you can imagine, uh, because... For us, it hasn't happened yet. For you, it has, intrepid listeners. Yes. Uh, so, for one, hey, tell us how Adepticon <laughs> went. We'd love to hear, uh, you know, what you Me guys enjoyed. Me specifically, about. I yeah. would love to hear about your guys' experience at Adepticon since I won't be there. Yeah, Rick won't be there, so uh, sadly, uh, so you'll have to regale him with all of your your fun adventures, your amazing dice rolls, your critical failures, <laughs> as as sometimes happens. And uh, I hope, and I really hope to see some pictures of those, yes. you know, deads on the podcast MMC guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we did, we did convince a bunch of a bunch of our uh, members of the the MMC here to that are going to be going to the event uh, to to get some T-shirts, and they have the deads on the podcast logo on them and the MMC on the back. So we made mention to that. Yeah. About the whole Michigan versus New York thing. Yeah. So I'm curious if Coach's crew is going to show up in something. That would be kind of fun. Family of Gamer 777 shirts. Yeah. Did you did you guys show up in something like that? You'll have to let us know. <laughs> Send pictures. If so, make sure we get pictures of it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm sure it's going to be a blast. Uh, we've talked at length about how many yep. events that we'll be running. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but I, I did want to touch on like. One of the things that that happened kind of between uh, the last episode, last full episode, and uh, the you know leading up to Adepticon is uh, you know I spoke to a number of, of friends of the show yep. uh, to kind of get sponsor prize support for yes. for Adepticon. Uh, so I did want to just kind of go through and give a big shout out because and thank yous and thank yous <laughs> to Uncertain Scenery who uh, not only you know contributed to uh, you know, we're going to have a sponsor. We had a sponsored. Uh, <laughs> this, this is this so weird. Past tense, <laughs> present tense thing. Um, it's almost like a train ride in the best movie ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one. Uh, we're going to flashback within the flashback. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Rick. Rick Tuck in the other room there must have heard us talking about Ghosts of Mars, which is a terrible movie. It's a great movie. <laughs> Oh, it's Rick Tuck's it's number three number movie. Number three. Wow. I don't think they can hear him at all, but we can, and that's kind of fun. I heard a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but uh, so uncertain scenery. Uh, we have a we had a sponsored table there yep. that was uh, predominantly their uh, scenery with with semantic uh, elements on top of it. Yep, to add to it. Yeah. Yep. And uh, but you know I'm sure everyone had a blast playing on that. Uh, they also he also contributed to price the price support, support yep. uh, for the event. So so some lucky winners are, are going to be walking <laughs> home with some really great goodies from right him. On. Uh, and especially with all the new stuff he's been posting lately. Yes. Uh, if you're in these Facebook groups, you've probably seen uh, uh, Craig posting these MDF projects that he's got coming up. And yeah, he's the, rail guns the and rail missile, gun, pods. missile pods. Missile pod. And uh, all sorts the of really pillbox. Yep, the little pillbox. Um, it's so cool. Great stuff for firefight. I need to seriously get my finances in order so I can order <laughs> some more. <laughs> I hear you there. Um, and so, so big thank you to Craig and, and yep. Uncertain Scenery uh, for supporting the the uh, those of us at Mantic Games. And uh, you know, th- one of the other sponsors we had is uh, Corvus Games Terrain. Corvus Games Terrain. Uh, these are the guys this that is so cool that did the Tyco Starport uh, STL. Yep. Uh, you know Kickstarter project. They previously had done the Isolation Protocols one, which we were also a huge fan of. Yes, we were. You know, it, it's terrain designed around Dead around Zone. Around Dead Zone, like 
really around Dead Zone. Yeah. I mean, he did the cube thing with him, and they go to well, go together incredibly well. Uh, mm-hmm. Now, like for me, the starport stuff, yeah, was like an upgrade. Yeah, that's... like absolutely loved the isolation protocols. But when the starport came out, it was like, oh my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isolation protocols was great because it was so customizable. It was very easy to yes. put together. Uh, you know, a new board at any yep. time you wanted to because uh, things just slotted together very easily. And it fits in with 3rd Edition. Yes. Because you look at how they release 3rd Edition with the, what happens in a dead zone when it first happens. So the, mm-hmm. sti- the cities are still not necessarily booming, but there's still action going on and nobody's yeah. necessarily aware that they're cut off. <laughs> right. But his Starport stuff, like, it fits right into that aesthetic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's great uh, training. We actually, we have had <laughs> uh, <laughs> two um, a board set up of the Tycho Starport. Yep. I, I've been <laughs> working around the clock to, to get that all printed and painted. I uh, really like how it came together. I'll, I'll talk a little bit later, maybe in a little hobby section about, about yeah. preparing some of that stuff. Um, but, you know... Really great to uh, have uh, those boards. They, I think they, they came together really well. I think people had a great time playing on them as Rick plays with his phone. Yeah, because, you know, I did the thing and forgot to turn it off. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure mine will probably ring today, and that's why I put it on vibrate. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, yeah, so, you know, not only that, uh, they also gave us some some great um, firefight terrain. Yes, uh, in the form of this really awesome crash, crash starship, site, which is so phenomenal. I can't believe you printed that I in resin, resin <laughs> and I didn't hollow it. No, that thing is a chunk. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's funny because like it's almost a foot around. I think. It, yeah, it's pretty big. Uh, unfortunately, part of the print failed. Oh no. But it failed at like the perfect spot. Oh, good. <laughs> so right on the back with the engine mounts, mm, yeah, yeah. Um, the lower ones, it looks like they're melted. Oh, neat. So it's like, yeah, it failed, but did it really? <laughs> <laughs> so now I got to figure out how to do that whole melted metal yeah, paint job on yeah. it. Yeah, when, that's going to take some work. <laughs> when something's crashed, you know, all those little imperfections are yeah. just little little clouds and, and little happy clouds, trees and mountains and stuff, <laughs> little birds. <laughs> yes, but you, and you printed it. Yep, obviously because it's on the table. Yeah, I printed it with a FDM in three parts. So he actually has it sliced up in a couple of different ways. So you printed whole. it whole. I printed it whole because um, I'm like, it fits. Which which <laughs> I would have done if like. As I was printing it, my reel was running low, and I'm like, oh. I'm not gonna make. I know yeah. I'm not gonna yeah. make it through, uh, and so I did. I did it in the three parts, but there is also a, a half, like a, a two parter yeah. one. So yeah. it, it sliced up so nicely. It really and, did. And prints very cleanly. Uh, I was really happy with how it turned out, and um, and so yeah. So you guys saw that yep. on the table as well, um, and so. Uh, on top of all that, uh, you know, uh, Steve uh, also uh, gave us a bunch of uh, giveaways for prize support for for so awesome winners of of different uh, events and and um, uh, you know uh, like the Sportsman Award and the Best Painted. Yeah, and then uh, you got some books. Yeah, I did. So, uh, as kind of the one of the last uh, big sponsors that we were able to put together, um, Wind Hussar Publishing, great friends of the show, Brandon <laughs> uh, is is a good friend of ours, and uh, and and Vincent, uh, though I don't talk with him as much, um, but uh, we were able to get a number of books uh, as prizes for yes. for winners. Which is so cool because those books are so fun. <laughs> yeah, they, they are. So there's a, a whole smattering of of some for, for the fantasy side for Armada. Yeah. And we're going to see if um, if we had uh, some sci-fi ones. They were, they're on their way. They're uh, on so, their way. Okay. So uh, we should be have a couple options for uh, those in the sci-fi realm. But on top of that, we did also get uh, coupon codes for uh, the winners of, of each tournament. Awesome. Uh, that I'll be running. So, uh, no, it was it was really awesome. Uh, Wind Hussar, 
is just fantastic guys. Yeah, they they are. They, um, they weren't at, at Adepticon this year. Aww. Um, but sadly, I wanted. I like hanging out with them. They're I, they're yeah. fun, and I I always pick up a book <laughs> when I visit their booth. Um, but uh, you know, it'll be great seeing them uh, next time. Yep. And uh, so you know, definitely go check out their uh, their online store where you can get uh, either ebook versions or uh, full on physical, physical copies. copies. Yep. Uh, there's a whole mess of new Kings of War books that are are coming out. Yeah, like in this month and next month. And <laughs> so a lot of great stuff uh, also in the works there. So nice. Yeah. Jack here from Dreadball Commercials. You've seen me. You love me. You know you want me. Here you're listening to Dead Zone, the podcast with Rick and Brian. Don't turn that dial or I'm coming for you. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry you can't be. I know. <laughs> can't <laughs> and couldn't be at Adepticon. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Yep. Uh, things happen. Yeah. Um, but I'm really glad that you were able to take the lead on the tournaments. Yeah. Um, well, it'll, be, it'll be interesting. <laughs> like, Obviously, the excitement of going to something like Adepticon, right? You mm-hmm. know, all that prep work that you do. Yeah. Um, it's like, you took it and ran with it. Yeah. You completely <laughs> ran with it. I, I definitely, uh, it, like, one one of the things that, that helped with that was those early registrations. Yes. Really kind of showed us what numbers we need to expect yeah. and prepare for. Uh, so, thank you guys uh, for pre-registering when you did. Yep. Uh, because that let us know, okay, we have double the amount of Armada <laughs> <laughs> players that we had last year, so we need twice Which as many awesome. tables. Um, and, and you know, we always had a full stack of Dead Zone players. Yep. We had um, 20 all told, and, and we were at uh, 18 for Firefight. So... <laughs> Uh, that's so awesome. No, it's it was great. And, uh, you know, thank you guys for, for signing up for that. And, you know, just going forward, we're going to... We're gonna keep that that kind of uh, fire behind these events. Yeah, uh, we love we love Adepticon. Uh, it's a great time to not only hang out with folks and uh, and just play some games, but also just you know have a great time. Well, yeah, and it's like so we build up uh, for us, like the two of us. It's it's essentially the Michigan GT ends and we start <laughs> building for Adepticon. Pretty much, Adepticon <laughs> ends. We start building. How can we do better at the Michigan GT? Yeah. Every year, that's mm-hmm. k- kind of how it's worked for us. Yeah. So, like this episode after this episode, it, it we do an actual recap. Mm-hmm. It, like it's okay. What do we do for the GT? Um, yeah. And if we keep that fire going and have some more events, yeah. Um, and to have them that the middle spot at upkeep or down closer to you and mm-hmm. up here at Evo or AFK or wherever, mm-hmm. like. We got to have as many events as we possibly can to keep that fire rolling. Yeah. Um, and I'm super excited about that. Mm-hmm. I really am. <laughs> uh, because it, it, the one of the things that I love about the Dead Zone firefight, Armada Kings of War, like our player base, mm-hmm. is they just love the game. Yeah. Yeah. And that love comes out in the community as far as like, helping each other out and having good tournaments where it, it doesn't matter if you've only looked at dead zone, right? Jump into the tournament and play. Yeah. It, especially, and, especially our tournaments. <laughs> Come on. Play our tournament. Cause it, like after a model or two, it's like, Oh, I get this. Yeah. Because the rules are so like, I don't want to call them basic um, just because that's unfair. Right. But they're an easy learned mechanic i i like to describe them as elegant elegant works yeah where where there there's a there's a smoothness to it where it's really easy to to get into you find that groove and it's like okay i i'm on the save wavelength of what this game (laughs) is is expecting of me but like within that there there's a great depth to to these mechanics right that that um and 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 uh, uh a utility to like all all the pieces 
um, for the game. Like I, I think I talked at length yep. about like. Man, I love that for like scattering. We just use a D eight and, yep, and it scatters. And we're on a cube, and, and so we're we got eight sides around the middle. <laughs> so uh, just just you know being able to to make the most out of you know not having a huge commitment yeah. by people, I think has been a, a, a big thing. But but yeah, I, these games are a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> they really are. Uh, I'm curious to see. Obviously, this is coming out afterwards. Like, yes. At some point, we're going to figure out how that mechanic works. The recording before an event and then and talking about it, it like, <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. We'll, we'll um, just start making up stuff that happened. I'm like, man, did you see what? Uh, <laughs> did you see that role on table two? Did you see that guy in the hood? It came out. It was Rob Berman the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be I, a thing? <laughs> I, I can't confirm or deny if Rob Berman was on a Dr. Con or not. <sighs> Um, I think Martin's there. <laughs> Martin's there for sure. Yeah. And then Pat. And Pat course. was there. And you guys. Yep. And not me. A bunch of us. Sadly, no Rick. Not me. Oh, unless, well. unless Rick was there in disguise. It's kind of hard for me to be in disguise. <laughs> True. <laughs> like, I kind of open my mouth and everybody knows it's me. <laughs> yeah, it, it is that thing. We have been, like, identified by the sound of our voices yes. <laughs> at, the, at Adepticon. And a number of events. So, but, but I, I'd love like to, to just kind of speak to, you know, events moving forward. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we were just talking with Rick Talk before we hit record about the idea of like a narrative, narrative. Uh, event and, and like mini campaign, I think would be a whole lot of fun. I, I, I think like the thing that's really cool about like the smaller, more localized events is you can experiment with. Yeah, you can play with around things. with the missions. You can play around with doing a story driven, mm-hmm. maybe not necessarily tournament. Yeah. Um, but a story driven day. But but I, I, I think too, like you really could do a story driven tournament in the sense where you have, uh, you know, you could almost have people kind of pick a side. But yeah. Uh, and then, you know, based on the success of the side that you picked, like, Okay, you get to start the next game with one extra command dice. Yeah, uh, so you have like very minimal things that could be uh, brought in, and or it could like oh, rotate. Yeah. Um, you know, okay, and this be pretty easy because I mean, you pick the bad guys, so yeah. you got like the plague, the vermin, the nameless, the rebs. That's completely the, the enforcers. Bad guys. <laughs> no, the they're the good guys. The Asterians, <laughs> <laughs> the first ones. I. You would have to split the Ford Fathers and Asterians. Yeah. They could not be on the same team. No. Like, that just doesn't work. And it's funny because that doesn't work in any environment. No. Elves and dwarves don't <laughs> work. <laughs> but, but it, and that's and that's where it could be something where you kind of pick a side and, and be a number of slots, right? Yeah. So, so that way you can kind of balance it. It wouldn't be, okay, okay, we've got one player on the quote unquote bad, bad guy side. side and, it, it's this Seven one Rebs, <laughs> Rebs player against <laughs> against the rest of them. Um, and, and, you know, but it could be, you know, almost, almost a pseudo team thing where, where the factions yeah. are fighting each other, right? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and, that, that, and that's that just an in, idea. But like, that also goes into the idea of your missions being that attacker defender, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. we've played around with a little bit. Yeah. Like, it really does work to do yeah. the attacker defender. But it has to be in that story style. Yeah, yeah, it definitely needs that little extra layer of context, um, and that's that's what kind of makes it a little tricky for a tournament. Is you know it, you want it to be a balanced thing, uh, so that you know espe- especially if there's like prizes on the line or yes. whatnot, uh, you don't you don't want anyone to have an overly unfair advantage yeah. over another player. Um, but at the same time, like that's really fun to do. Yes. <laughs> Uh, from a playing the game kind of standpoint. Well, yeah, and you, if you do that bad guy, good guy, or just split up, like if you actually just split up the faction, you don't necessarily have to call it good guys, bad guys. No, yeah. Like the Enforcers and the Instarians have teamed up this time. Right, yeah. It, it's that a whole uh, Marvel it, Universe team up they, thing. <laughs> they could literally be just like corporations. Yes. And it's like, all right, this corporation has hired... Uh, you I know, hired these, the marauders. these marauders, uh, with these Asterian pirates and, yep. uh, you know, they're going to go rip apart the rebs. 
Yep. <laughs> if they can <laughs> find them. <laughs> uh, uh, sneaky little butts. <laughs> yeah. Woo, go Rebs. There it is. I'm I'm really I'm really excited for uh to see how many Rebs players we have at the at Dead Zone. Yeah. That'll oh, be a fun time. Boy. Too many Rebs. Yeah. Or <laughs> or not enough. Uh, but yeah, so so like I, I I'd also like one thing I want to do going forward is do a few more casual get together days uh where it's it's a group of us getting Just together and playing games, yeah yeah cuz cuz that was one thing um you know I, I i think i i tried to cram in a a quick yep. firefight tournament um and and sadly i think I think it was just the weather killed it. <laughs> the, we- the weather was was definitely the final stroke, uh, <laughs> where we we had a big ice storm that came through, yeah. and you know places where people were without power, yep. uh, didn't know you know what what they were gonna have to expect for the the upcoming weekend. I know I personally had a tree branch that I had to you clear had out of my back branch. patio. <laughs> I had work emergencies that I ended up having to work that weekend. Yeah, so so sadly uh, that didn't uh, uh, call and ask. Colesque. Yeah, that's the word. Sure. Uh, it means, now you're using it means those come, like, come together. <laughs> those are like those really big words that Rick doesn't know. <laughs> oh. um, it, it's, I'm trying to flex my writing brain oh, so, okay. so I don't use the same word. Over what, what, over what's over what's funny is as I'm writing, like I'll have it where it's like the teraton, the teraton, the teraton. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go back through that later and change, <laughs> change this so I have some, some variance and it's not just a... The repeating uh, yeah. echo chamber, but um, but yeah, so so that's that's the thing where it's like I want to do a few more casual games to get people used to coming together. Yeah, um, on a on a more regular basis because I think that was another component is, uh, and, and this is kind of funny because I I talked with my one of my other neighbors Chris that I, yeah. I played yep. firefight with uh, a week ago, and uh, he used to run a game store, oh, okay. and. Um, and so, like, that's one thing he he's always kind of observed too. He's like, yeah, you know, some sometimes you like people love the games and they want to play them, but you kind of have to push them into play, like coming yeah. out and playing. Yeah. Um, if especially if it's not something that they're doing weekly or yep. biweekly, you know, if there's not a set schedule, uh, it can kind of it can be a little tricky to get people to to kind of. Come out of their shells, so out to of their speak, shells and, and like go to a specific place. And, yeah, and especially when you throw it in for an afternoon, four <laughs> games. Yeah, yeah, four like, games. Typically, you're looking time. at a tournament. You're three, four games, but if you do it as just a game day, yeah, y- you have that more casual feel to it, and mm-hmm. it also allows players to change up their list and play something they they wouldn't. Yeah, because it it's not in a tournament setting. Because in the tournament, obviously, you're trying to win. Mm-hmm. You're bringing the best of your ability to that tournament. In a some casual, of us. <laughs> some of us, yeah. I mean, oh look, they're not playing that, so I'll play that. Yeah. Um, but it generally is they're 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 playing a list also that they've played over and over and over again, so they yeah. know the ins and outs of that list. Mm-hmm. On a casual game day, it'll be that oh, Rick doesn't play Rebs. Why is Rick playing Rebs? Exactly. So. <laughs> What's wrong with Rick? <laughs> <laughs> Brian finally won him over. The no, rebellion has it'll begun. It'll never happen. <laughs> but Viva la France. There's, there's that opportunity there mm. to play, like to experiment. To experiment, and like Nick's a perfect example. Like all he plays is Asterians. Mm-hmm. He does have some other models. Yeah, like he could easily play the Enforcers. Mm-hmm. A casual, casual game day would give him that opportunity to not only play those Enforcers. But also play against other people that he doesn't play locally with. Yeah, yeah, that's that's another big thing is, uh, you know, because our community is kind of spread out. <laughs> our, our community is a little a little spread out, so like getting it In pockets. <laughs> local, yeah, localized uh, is is a bit tricky. But and and that and that can um, you know kind of come out of as 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 it's called the meta yeah. of, of a game scene, right? Where where the the like minded players you know playing each other constantly. We'll, yep. we'll, you know, find out great counters for each other, but then <laughs> pit it against somebody else and they just get destroyed. Yeah. Because uh, cause it's just something they haven't seen before. Yeah. They, that's the fun part about the meta. Yeah. And the idea of a casual game day completely changes the landscape for a meta. 
Yeah. It'd also be a great like space to do some of that narrative yeah. gaming and get yeah, and get people trying out these these uh, uh crazy missions as- asymmetric and... missions and yeah. attacker defender. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Um, and so that that's one thing like going forward uh, between now and, and the Michigan GT. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's something that uh, I want to do after after a little break. After a little break, <laughs> yep. And, and I think one of the other kind of fun things, the, the added side effect of doing all this prep for Adepticon uh, is that now I have a whole bunch of stuff <laughs> that I can use to run events. Um, whereas before... Like, you know, I, I have a decent amount of terrain uh, to, yeah. to do, like, you know, maybe up to up to eight players or something. And usually we have other people kind of supplement their own uh, terrain and, and it all shakes out well. But, like, when you're able to, to practically host an event uh, on all your own stuff, yeah. uh, <laughs> it, it definitely, like, uh, I, I think, again, kind of helps motivate people. It's like, oh, I just need to brain... I just need to bring my army. I just need to bring my list, and I'll yep. have a fun time. I don't have to worry about the <laughs> packing up and, <laughs> and setting things up and, and whatnot. So, but yeah, that that was, uh, you know, I had to to really stock up on a lot of. Uh, I tried to to do a lot of different terrain that I didn't have previously. Yeah. Um, with this with this new stuff, just to kind of you know differentiate what I have to to offer to people. Hey there, I'm Brian. And I'm Rick. This is Blaine. You are listening to Dead Zone, the podcast. Keep listening for more excellent material from these two amazing men. Blaine, out. So, why don't we jump over into some hobby talk? Sure. Because, well, one, we need to figure out a name for this section because it's really important now. Yeah, um, yeah, it's 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 becoming a little bit of a bigger thing. <laughs> it is a bigger thing uh, because you did a lot of stuff for Adepticon, mm-hmm. um, and obviously I've seen pictures of it. it Welcome but, to Hobby Zone, the podcast. <laughs> Hobby Zone, the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. We're, we'll, we're workshopping that. <laughs> we'll workshop it. We'll figure it out. But the but the really big reason why I want to jump into the hobby and what's on the table and what we've been doing is because we came into something that the podcast has never had before. Mm-hmm. Um, we officially have a sponsor. Woo-hoo! Um, and specifically a sponsor for our hobby talk. And yeah. What are we doing on the table? Um, and he's already supported us. Mm-hmm. Uh, he made our logo for us. Yep. Um, he, he obviously Starport. Yep. Uh, isolation protocols, a little firefight. Um, so we now have a sponsor from Corvus Games. Woo-hoo. That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. And it's working. At, and the coolest thing about that is for the listeners of the podcast, um, there is a code that you get to use on his website that gets you 15% off. Nice. That's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also... I need to change my budget. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so with that said, yeah. Let's talk about what you did at Adeptcon for all the scenery. Because sure. a good portion of what you printed was Corvus yes. terrain. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it was Corvus Games terrain. Uh and so uh so I did a lot of the uh like I mentioned earlier, the Tycho yep. Starport. Um I'd have us I had a set uh that I had done previously that was a really kind of a white aesthetic. With, yeah, because that with, was the hospital style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and it was it was you know supposed to be kind of the this this uh, you know civilization at the event yes. of, of the dead zone, right? So it's still still in good standing. You know, businesses might have still been open, kind of thing. <laughs> uh, it it still looks like a, a very livable place. Yeah. Um, and so I, I had had a bunch of terrain that I I painted up for that. 
And uh, and it was a thing where it's like, man, I I not only did I need some more for Adepticon, yeah, uh, to to run another table of it, but I also wanted to come up with a better technique okay. uh, of of kind of painting it and yeah. getting the table ready. Uh, and so, uh, you know, kind of with that, I, I made sure I did a couple other uh, different building structures uh, that he, that he <laughs> yeah. had included. Like there was uh, a number that were of, of kind of destroyed buildings. Uh, so I have yeah. a, a few of those uh, in place uh, with, with extra little pieces for like broken <laughs> uh, rooftops and, and yep. stuff. Uh, did a bunch of uh, the scatter terrain that he had. Yes. Uh, to to fill up all the the other spaces in between, and um, and kind of with that, what I what I kind of came to was, you know, the the slap chop is kind of the new buzzword. Yeah. Uh, where where it's it's kind of primed. Primed dark. Dark. And then you, and then do you uh, the dry, dry brush. Yeah. Uh, and so I actually for for this terrain, I, I did that actually mostly for the the spaceship, the crash spaceship. Yeah. Uh, where it was, I, I just sprayed it all black. I did a gray, and then I did some white, and then I had color. Yeah. Um, and uh, I did use a lot of contrast paint sure. to, to do that. Uh, feedback from that is maybe not as much contrast paint for for scenery for pieces piece. for big yeah. scenery pieces. Uh, I it just it it when it there's less sit. crevices yeah. uh, for it to kind of. A lot of weave flat into. area. Uh, it, it just doesn't work as well. And with it being a bit more of an expensive paint, uh, uh, it's yep. it's worth more going with a, a cheaper paint that you kind of water down a little bit to thin yeah. it. Uh, and that way, that that under lighting that you did with the, the grays and the whites yeah. will, sh- will shine, still shine through. Oh, yeah. Uh, if, if you just do it without... Uh, watering down, it's it's going to be <laughs> opaque, and you're not going to see any of that, and yeah. it was kind of pointless, um, which I've done before <laughs> too, and I came to that realization. Um, but so with the 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 Tyco Starport ones, what I actually did is I found a, a guy on YouTube that uh, kind of demonstrated like painting up some some Warhammer terrain and that he's like, and I was able to do this like in the morning. I'm like, that's how fast I need to do this. <laughs> Correct, because you had a lot to paint. And and so, like, previously, I'd always kind of done, like, black spray paint, you know, primer, uh, or, or white spray paint primer, yeah. gray spray paint. And uh, what he suggested is, like, okay, well, this is going to be going on. Uh, you know, he had a big old, like, building piece. And he's like, so what I do is I actually spray paint it all, like, a dark color. So, like, a dark blue. It, yeah, a dark blue. Like in my case, I went with a dark blue. In his case, he was doing dark brown because okay. it was going to be on a, a dirt kind of colored mat. Oh, okay. And so like that kind of gives off almost a natural reflection of the ground uh, at, at, the, at the end <laughs> yeah. of this. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then what he said, you know, it's, it's basically the – and then I did like gray uh, from, from away at a 45, just kind of – misting down on it sure. as much as possible. Uh, but what that leaves is kind of the shaded, the shaded parts then have a, a little bit of color in them already, yeah. as opposed to just being like pitch black, which was oh, kind yeah. of how I used to have it. Um, and so it, it, it already gives it a little bit of extra flavor. Uh, and then, <laughs> and then uh, did a dry brush of a lighter gray okay. over the top of that uh, to kind of, uh, highlights a lot of the the pe- other elements of it that are are uh, you know uh, covered with that that darker blue yeah. in my case uh, and and bring out uh, those pieces and then uh, from there I just did like a little uh, the, the fun thing about the Tyco Starport setup <laughs> is it like comes complete with like striped lines yep. uh, in the architecture already so it's like okay I'm just gonna do a color here, you know, I'm holding up two fingers to show like two stripes <laughs> and a color here. It's because we're and, really good at that. And then I'm going to do like the, most of the buildings have a big like uh, stamp as far as like, uh, yep. you know, W3. Uh, and it's like, okay, I'll do yellow for that. And and suddenly this, this you know, dark blue, like, you know, has this kind of lighter gray 
and it, it's it's got a nice little like cool color to it, but it looks yeah. worn with the dry brushing. Like, uh, and and then the splash of color really kind of brings it home. I it was really, really does. Ha- really happy with how it turned out, and uh, it took me maybe half, maybe even a quarter of the time that it did to make the white ones. Oh wow! Uh, okay, because that one was much more color intensive. Like I yeah. I did a lot more of of having to do like really flat coloring yep. with it being white, uh, flat. Yeah, painting it, white is always fun. It, it was tricky to make sure that was consistent throughout <laughs> and whatnot. Uh, so, but yeah, I was, I was able to put out a, a, put together like a whole table's worth of terrain in, you know, a rather relatively short amount of time. Short enough time so you can get it all done. Yeah. So <laughs> I could get it all done. And on top of all the Armada stuff that I wanted to paint into. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, so uh, really really great stuff. It prints so well. I've I've finally yes. got my three D printer dialed in uh, enough. Uh, so so one thing for me because I was having to print these on a raft at one point. Yeah. Because a lot of them are kind of big flat, and my yep. my printer didn't like big flat things <laughs> for like the rooftops and stuff. Yeah. Um, and and it was always having like a curling issue. Oh um, yeah. Um, I, I actually turned the heat of my bed down rather than up. Really? It was kind of counterintuitive, uh, but like I like looking at some what some people recommended online and, and looking at like the temperature that they recommend for the filament itself, it was like a, a 50 to 55 degrees Celsius um, was kind of like the, the range goes up, but like that's where they kind of recommend the lower point. And so I found like, haven't had a 60 <laughs> like I can paint that or I can print them with the brim and have no no curl up huh. and no uh, very few misprints of it like getting kicked off uh, right. of the, the build plate which was a Good very common thing with my printer because uh, <laughs> that's a hobby in, unto itself yes it but is. um but no the the and I I really want to get back into doing some of the isolation protocol projects yeah. Because uh, that that terrain is a whole lot of fun uh, to, to. It is because it's so customizable. Yeah, and I, I, I do want to make buildings that I'll have like yes. set pieces, which is perfect for firefight. And I even want to come up with like ways that I can expand them very easily, where it's yeah. like, okay, this this uh, walkway or whatever that I'm I'm putting together now, I'm gonna have like struts in the middle of it, but then it'll be able to slot in on one of the sides of another building or yep. something like that because they all have well, the, the struts. Well, that's the cool thing about isolation protocols with mm. with his corner pieces because they all have the section on top that allows you to reconnect them to another building so it's stable. Yeah. Uh, so it allows for that customization of your building. So when you print your building, you're, it's, okay, that building is done. This mm-hmm. building is done. <laughs> okay, I've played on this a few times. All mm. I have to do is move things around and it's still stable. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. No, the, the Corvus game terrain uh, stuff is definitely worth checking out. Use that that code that we have for yep. you. Uh, it'll be in the show notes here. So, uh, <laughs> you know, je- definitely check that out. Uh, or do we have it in writing yet? Yes. Okay. Are you going to read it off of the air? Oh, I guess I can. Yeah. I? Hold on real quick. I got to pull it up. Because some people don't read. Read the notes. <laughs> yeah. Um, here it is. Where is it at? There it is. So it's capital D Z P O D C A S T. So dead's on the podcast. Capital M for March. Alrighty. Yeah. So D Z P O D C A S T M A R C H gets you fifteen percent. Awesome. And you put that in as like a coupon code. Yeah, as a coupon at, code at checkout. Yep. So um yeah, we're 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 kind of working through the this kind of yep. sponsor thing. Um so thank you very much for Corvus Games Train for yes, being our first thank sponsor. Thank you so much. Uh it's it's been great working with you, uh, especially preparing for Adepticon. Obviously. Uh and and going forward going like going forward and seeing what we end up building. Um and he has a, a Kickstarter project so yes, coming up. He has a he has a hobby Kickstarter coming yeah. out. So a lot of us we have our paint racks. Mm-hmm. Um so Corvus Game created this paint rack system 
that has some extra drawers and, and it holds all the different paint styles. So, I mean, your Scale 75, your Monument Hobby, your GW Citadels, uh, your Army Painter, all fit in this. Awesome. But you print it off in pieces that you need. So, like, if you only have a, a hand, 24 paints. Yeah. Because you're that guy that just started. Mm -hmm. You're able to print off just the pieces you need. And then as you get more, you just print off the next piece. And it's customizable, so it fits in your hobby space. Yeah. Uh, it's so cool. And that Kickstarter comes out next month? Very soon. Very soon. And so it comes out next month. So it comes out... In April. In April. Yep. Yeah. Hey, if you're looking for Dead Zone the Podcast, check out every social media platform because you're probably going to find us. Just look us up, Dead Zone the Podcast. So right around the corner, uh, definitely check that out. We'll be we'll be trumpeting it as soon as yes. it's uh, as is available. Uh, but he he makes some really great uh, designs. I think they're yes, he does. they're a whole lot of fun. There there is also a a huge line of other stuff that he has for like oh, cyberpunk yeah. games, Star Wars games, Western. Westerns. He does have a little uh, fantasy in there. Yep. Marvel Crisis Protocol. Yep. Like he's got some a great, great set of modern uh, <laughs> scenery to, to check out. So uh, definitely definitely pop on over to his digital store and and you know if if you don't do the three D printing thing, uh, <laughs> find a friend that does. Yep. And and you know workshop together. To, I'm pretty sure at this point. All of us in this hobby know at least one person with a yeah. prayer. <laughs> and if you're listening to the podcast, you know two of us. <laughs> so, yes. Um, but but they're they're very FDM friendly. Very. Uh, so uh, they're they're really easy to print. They're really high quality. Um, and and yeah, definitely definitely check that out because yes. uh, it's it's been a great boon for for us uh, for for the hobby. Yeah. Uh, I I think I've mentioned in the past one of the other big things of, of me almost exclusively switching to, to his terrain for demos uh, is it's very durable. Like, yes, it's it, incredibly it's durable. It's very sturdy, um, which I can't be said for my Mantic buildings. <laughs> yeah, uh, mine aren't written yet. Yeah, but, but that's because I'm, I'm, kind, of, I'm kind of like, ah, do I really want to glue these pieces together yep. and I'm just going to do it poorly? So that's more against me. Uh, but, but the, the Tyco Starport stuff, I can kind of just throw into a bin and it'll come out looking yes. just as fine, uh, as when it went in. So, uh, yeah. Well, I think with that, that wraps us up for this episode. Yeah, I suppose. It really a, does. It's like, been, it's, it's been funny coming into this, coming into this episode, we were both like, um, so this is going to release after Adepticon. So what do we actually talk about? Yeah. And here we are, and almost we an are. hour in. Yeah, <laughs> going. Oh, that, hey, that, wow. that's that's been a fun thing of, about the the podcast is we've had that in the past where it's like, man, do we really have anything to talk about this <laughs> this month? And sure enough, we'll find we something. We record and it just goes. Yeah, and and we'll we'll talk about something for an hour. So thank you guys <laughs> for listening to that. Yes, thank you. Because um, um, you also realize that we're coming up on. The podcast is specifically coming up on 10 years. Oh, wow. So Rob and Jack started this almost 10 years ago. It's been a little little bit. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to we're gonna have to definitely do something special for the listeners. Yes. For that 10 year, which I believe, I think I wrote it down as June. Okay. I think. We'll, we'll have that exact date. We'll right. fix that in post. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, The amount of stuff you say we're going to fix in post and it's still in there. <laughs> so so for those of you that listened to the last Warzone episode yes. where, where Rick uh, uh, said, and, and cut, <laughs> and welcome back. <laughs> yeah, I did that intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> you... <laughs> I waited for like another of two course. minutes to go by, and then I. Then of I course the you did. <laughs> so just so you know, that was intentional. <laughs> it was an intention. That, that's the scary part about recording the podcast. 
for the Warzone Eternal and just sending it to you. Yeah. Because I have no <laughs> idea what you're going to do with it. <laughs> now I, I know. I treat it well. It's it's in it's in good hands. Um, but yeah, so so I think another thing we we like with our our the sponsorship stuff that yes. we're going to do. Obviously, we have the coupon code uh, yep. for Corvus. Definitely that, take advantage that, of that because that coupon code is good until our next episode. Yep. So it's it's good until April twenty eighth. Yes. Uh, so get out and use it as quickly as possible. Yes. Buy up all the the, the SCLs you can possibly <laughs> have because well maybe not all of them so you can buy some in April. Oh yeah, you can you can spread it out a little bit. Yeah, you can spread that out. You can work it into your paycheck schedule. <laughs> 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 Just garnish your wages. Garnish your wages <laughs> specifically. <laughs> But uh, I, I do want to mention, like, kind of with the, the sponsorship stuff and the, the ideas and plans that we kind of have for uh, future sponsored uh, projects going forward, yeah. is we do want to do a lot more community-based uh, yes. things. So doing things like, uh, you know, raffles and prizes. Like, I I know uh, some of you uh, hopefully came and, and found me up. By, yeah, uh, the Utopia room to tell me that you tried out Warzone Eternal yes. and uh, are getting entered into the the mysterious raffle that I'm just taking your name <laughs> down for, uh, and and email information. Hopefully, yes. I remember to do that. And uh, but we want to do that kind of stuff for more the stuff podcast for the too. Uh, and I think doing uh, a few more like charity type yes. drives uh, as well would be something that. Uh, you know, it's it's stuff that we are are passionate about in our personal lives, and really feel like the the podcast, both our our listeners and those involved in the community, could really benefit from. So that's that's kind of our way of, of giving back to you guys. Yep. Uh, apart from, you know, I don't, I don't want to have the ego about. Well, yeah, you listen to us, so we're we're already giving you that. Uh, I don't I don't think that I really appreciate you guys listening to us yeah. uh, as much as you do, and and tell your friends. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah so so uh dead's on the podcast celebrating 10 years coming up here real soon real soon and uh and we've got we got a lot of fun stuff in store uh for for everybody in the yes. mantic universe so and secret missions and secret missions that's all i'm gonna say okay secret so follow us on all those social <laughs> media platforms yes. Uh, you can look for Dead Zone the podcast, and and we will likely be on that platform. So uh, pretty much. Uh, so I'm going to stop rallying off because that was a great idea from Rick Talk the other day, the last time he was on. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I was on. It was like, yeah, uh, just find us that way. It's uh, it's a great way to do it. Um, or or reach out to us. Um, and and in the comments and the Facebook page. Yep. Uh, it's where we're we're kind of most active. If Brian doesn't get back to you recently or like in a timely fashion, it's because his phone <laughs> has turned off all notifications for most of the apps on it. I might have deflected that question to you because it was like, <laughs> I don't know anything about that part of it. Yeah. So uh, I do apologize if you've been trying to reach me about anything uh, related to anything. Uh, to anything. It, it's, it's, I'm, I'm trying to, to solve it and it was literally working at the beginning of the month of March. Oh wow! And like literally the weekend that the the ice storm came through and, and everything like that. Oh. Uh, it it just like stopped sending me notifications. Huh. I don't know why. Interesting. But you can listen, <laughs> uh, subscribe, and you will get notifications <laughs> of when new episodes drop. Yes. So yeah, we have fun here. We really do. <laughs> So it's funny you were talking with with Rick uh, Rick Talk. I'll keep differentiating sure. you as, as you continue to vie for Rick Suprem- Rick Premacy. Oh no, he's got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, you're talking about the narrative yes. ideas and game ideas that he had, and I couldn't help but think of like how cool would it be to like 
escort a, a truck or something like that across like a oh, firefight yeah. uh, uh, event, but like a mule escort. Yeah, but but not not in the way that uh, like there there was the Ronnie the Bard. Uh, yes. Uh, yep. Scenario in Vanguard where he like literally just wandered everywhere. Yeah. Um, it would be something where it's like more along the lines of like, okay, you have paths you can take. Yeah. Where where it's like, okay, Almost like roadways. Yeah. Where where every round the truck is gonna move, right? Yep. And then it's it's up to the player where it's like, okay, you decide where what direction they're so, gonna move. So do you run that as a attacker defender, or do you run it as you're both? doing a transport where you have to get to set objective and get back to your deployment zone with it. All of these uh, ideas are correct. (laughs) (laughs) It could could be a worthy scenario. So (sighs) I'm, I'm excited to, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to come up with new, to experiment again with dead zone scenarios, with firefight scenarios, with different point levels uh, for both. Uh, cause 168, 168, that could be sure. fun. I, it, ironically, I was kind of flipped and I was like 186. 186. <laughs> I mean, we try both. We could try both. Why not both? Yep. <laughs> I don't know the Spanish way to say that phrase. I don't know Spanish. 